Holy cow, it's Mask Fanatic time again! Seems like uh, you barely have time to blink and it's Mask Fanatic time again. Tonight, fellow devotees of monsters and the art of masks and monster making, tonight we go back to the year 1984, um, at which time a great mask came out based on a movie that came out in the 1982, made in 81, officially released in 82, and that movie was The Evil Dead by Sam Raimi. Are you a fan of The Evil Dead? Did you like The Evil Dead? If you haven't seen it, you should, and if, if uh, well, if you didn't like it, why not? I don't understand anybody not liking The Evil Dead. I thought it was uh, was great. The, the original one I'm talking about from back in the 80s, that's right. And then in 84, 85, we had this fantastic mask from Sam Raimi's movie, The Evil Dead. The mask was called simply The Evil Dead. That's right. Not to be confused with The Good Dead. I understand that film wasn't nearly as big of a hit. Didn't make, didn't have the impact, you know. Didn't, didn't make its mark on cinema the way Evil Dead. Anyway, this uh, mask uh, was sculpted by none other than Jeff Death, or as the dead know him, Jeff Kine. Now, Jeff Death of Death Studios has been responsible for a lot of great masks over the years. You know, I never tell him about these... I know Jeff Death, and I never tell him about these segments. And I probably should, huh? I should tell him when I'm talking about one of his masks, or send him a link to the video or something. I never do. I don't know. Who's got time for that, right? No, we don't have time for that. We're, we've got masks to, to celebrate and glorify and uh, geek out over here in the attic. This particular one is Cheryl from the Evil Dead and uh, well if you saw Evil Dead if you've ever seen and I'm sure you remember Cheryl because she's kind of the image that everybody came away with from that movie because she's the most frightening uh, image in it and she's the most uh, memorably scary and nightmarish um, well she's uh, the thing that's banging on the uh, the cellar door do you remember that and she keeps trying to get out of the cellar door and you see that head kind of like whack a ghoul popping up. That's Cheryl, as played by actress Ellen Sandweiss, who uh, was only in a few other uh, movies. She's, she's not been like a big, a big major star of uh, this kind of thing, the way uh, Bruce Campbell became, but, but she's quite good in the original Evil Dead. And well, uh, again, this, was, this is actually a licensed edition, by the way, licensed by, I don't think it has any markings on the back, but I'm gonna look because if I say that, and then I'll be incorrect. Oh no, it is there. I stand corrected. You have to uh, you have to pull up the hair, and it says back here, 1984 Renaissance Pictures, a re res res resist resisted 1980. Well, <clears throat> well, at least I can read the first part about the Renaissance Pictures. Yeah, Jeff Death sculpted this likeness of Cheryl, uh, and. Uh, Offered it for a couple of years, not a real long time. Mostly the 84, 85, 86 period, just in there, and then that was pretty much it. Um, now, if you've seen uh, Evil Dead recently, you may be thinking that this looks a little simplified or a little too smooth, but I gotta tell you, it's a little weird trying to capture these things to go from 3D to 2D to 3D. It's, it's always a, a, a magical process and kind of a complicated one, and if you think about it, you know, really, most of these things start out in two dimensions, which would be uh, an artist's uh, sketch, like a storyboard artist, uh, a design on paper for the makeup or the creature in question. And then that goes into 3D for what you see in the movie, because, uh, you know, it's done with a makeup or a mask or a, a, a puppet of some kind. Then it goes back to 2D when you see the movie, because you're watching the movie projected flat, on a flat surface, then it goes back to 3D when the person who makes the mask has to take the 2D image from the movie and make a mask of it, and right now it's gone back to 2D because you're watching me saying this on a two-dimensional screen. So uh, with all that, with all that uh, di dimensional chicanery going on, it's a wonder we ever get any of these things to look like they should. But uh, Jeff did make her a little uh, smoother than she looks in the movie. But I gotta tell you, it's really hard to do that oatmeal and tissue paper kind of uh, business and get it to look like a, a believable texture uh, when you're outside the very controlled and very specific uh, lighting and photography uh, atmosphere of 
a movie being made. They can light it and shadow it and show it however they want. But then when you see it in, in 3D and in just a normally lit room and it's just sitting there, it doesn't always look uh, the same. Uh, did that, did that, do you understand that? Are you with me? You following me? Well, stop following me or I'll have you arrested. If I, if, when I need a stalker, I will appoint one. That's right, I'll have an officially appointed stalker. But anyway, I think Jeff did a fine job here. This is a very hot mask, very scary, creepy, disturbing, spooky mask. It's been in Horror Hotel lots of times. It does not have as much hair as Cheryl in the movie has, but uh, that's understandable. It's a mask, you know? It's, it's, it's uh, not an exact reproduction, but I would say if you're not happy with with that, uh, the hair being done in the style of a mask rather than uh, the big wig like in the movie, get yourself a big gray wig and put it on there and it, it looks fine. I did that. I put a witch wig on her for Halloween a lot of times, but uh, yeah, it doesn't doesn't always have the uh, the wig on. Just just uh, sometimes. Sometimes she just likes to uh, chill with her natural look right here, with her lovely hair being kind of uh, kind of simplified, but. A very scary mask, and uh, by the way, you can wear these. I've had this since 1984. Holy cow! Um, did I say holy? Cow? Yeah, I did. Um, this this uh, has eye slits cut above the eyeballs and below the brow. It has little holes in the nostrils trimmed out, and it has the space between the teeth cut out. So it's actually wearable, and uh, and pretty darn scary, I think, too. Pretty spooky and creepy and disturbing and that's why I like it so uh, I've seen some of these later that were um, in other people's collections that were made from a uh, production mold whereas this one's from a master mold so some of them look a little smaller than this one um, I, I lucked out and got one of the big ones I believe I think this is correct I believe my uh, lovely wife Laura bought this for me for Christmas one year before she was my wife she was my lovely girlfriend Laura but uh, I've had it all that time and I've had it for tonight because um, I got to get out of this attic. Bye now.